Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. It's always wonderful to read Joseph Murphy, and I have a new fantastic Joseph Murphy lecture on the law of security from his book, The Great Truth That Set Us Free. Joseph Murphy is one of my very favorite metaphysical teachers who taught about the subconscious mind and really powerful teachings on the Bible. Every time I read his books, they stick with me. His lectures remain with me and I think about them often and they have really helped me understand old spiritual lessons I was given when I was younger and what they really mean. This focuses on security. I've spent some time focusing on the universal laws in previous episodes. We've talked about the law of correspondence, the law of receiving, the law of attraction. And each of these have unveiled the basic framework of the universe, almost like it's a software. And if we can follow these laws and understand them, we can really manifest and create any reality we want. And this is a new addition, the law of security. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land, for God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. Judges 18.10 You are secure when you walk in the realization that God indwells in you, and walks and talks in you. Realize that you are always in the holy omnipresence surrounded by the sacred circle of God's eternal love. As you continue to do this, you will build up an immunity to all harm. Claim, feel, and know that you, your family, your possessions, and all things appertaining to you are in the secret place of the Most High, watched over by an overshadowing presence which watches over you in all your ways. This is the impregnable fortress, invincible and impervious to everything negative. In the above verse of Judges, it says, When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, meaning that wherever you travel, divine love goes before you, making straight, joyous, and happy the way. A place where there is no want means that the presence of God is operating in your life. The presence of God means the presence of harmony, beauty, love, peace, abundance, and security. And thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Job 11.18 Hope springs eternal in the human breast. You may dig in the earth and find precious stones, jewels, oil, water, and other precious things. When you dig within yourself, you discover a gold mine full of infinite treasures, the precious stones of wisdom, truth, beauty, inspiration, guidance, intuition, and creative ideas which heal, bless, inspire, and protect you, enabling you to sleep in peace every night and to wake in joy. Asleep or awake, wherever you are, you realize that divine love surrounds you, enfolds you, and enwraps you. The Triumph of Principles Emerson said that nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. When you learn the laws of life and practice them, you will develop a sense of security There is the universal law of action and reaction. What is impressed on your subconscious is expressed. When you build an airplane, an automobile, or a bridge, the engineer conforms to universal principles. The wheels of your car have to be round, otherwise you're in trouble. You would not navigate a ship except you learned the laws of navigation. Look at the engineer building a bridge. He upgrades according to the principles of mathematics calculating the stress and strain of materials used, the load the bridge is supposed to bear, etc. In other words, the man who navigates an airplane learns the laws of navigation and lives by them. Some years ago, a speaker of Taniguchi, the spiritual leader of about 6 million people in Tokyo, Japan, told me that when the floods touch certain cities in Japan, 
The truth students are never there. They believe they are always divinely guided and watched over by an overshadowing presence. One of the teachers told me that he had been scheduled to go by boat to another city. But when he arrived at the place to embark, he discovered he was one hour late. His watch had stopped. The ship was lost subsequently in a storm. He believed that God was his guide and protector, watching over him in all ways. His prayer was, God is guiding me and watches over me at all times. You can find security within. Today, we have social security, pension systems, food stamps, medical care, and billions of dollars are poured out by the government all over the world to friend and so-called foe. Yet there is a deep sense of insecurity, apprehension, and fear abroad in the world. In Hollywood and elsewhere, we see a pornographic cesspool of iniquity and moral decay, and swingers making a mockery of marriage. People are afraid to go out at night or walk the streets. Yes, there is a perfading sense of insecurity. Coddling of criminals is quite prevalent. You can write to local legislators and congressmen, for example, telling them how you feel. You can also pray that infinite spirit in its wisdom selects men and women for government positions and for congressmen who are spiritually dedicated and who have a reverence for things divine. This will help considerably. And if we had enough people who knew how to pray scientifically, we would have a different Congress. Venereal disease of all kinds is rampant among young people. Heart disease, cancer, and alcoholism are taking their toll. Some say the world is going to the dogs. No, it is going to God. Read the 91st Psalm at night and Psalm 27 in the morning. Saturate your mind with the truths of God. As you do, you will be a broadcasting station neutralizing to some degree the toxic effluvia of the mass mind. I read recently there was a swing back to the old virtues. One article said young men and women were flocking back to the seminaries and studying the scriptures with an insatiable hunger to serve people. That is a good sign. You don't want to be a part of the mass mind, which means the thinking of four billion people in the world whose thoughts are mostly negative. If you do not do your own thinking, the mass mind moves in upon you and makes a mess of your life. It is well known that nature abhors extremes. Notice, for example, how we have gone to extremes in sexual depravity and perversion. On the screen and on the stage, nature has no other way than to cause us to swing back to the opposite. Nature always seeks a balance. When you misuse the law of your life, you may find yourself in a hospital cot. Perhaps you might call it a nervous breakdown, but it is a benign nature compelling you to get back on the beam of harmony and peace of mind. We used to live under the old Victorian taboos and strictures. Then came a violent swing to the opposite, the Freudian era, with its emphasis on sex, followed by looseness, immorality, and aberrations of all kinds. Change eternal is at the root of all things. Every day you read about wars, eruptions, strife, and ambushes, civil wars, bombings, kidnappings, etc. Ask yourself, what can I do about this? How can I retain my peace and sense of security in this changing world? You can feel secure and retain your peace, tranquility, and serenity only by tuning in mentally with the infinite spirit, which lies stretched in smiling repose. It is the primal cause. Affirm boldly, divine love fills my soul, Divine peace saturates my mind and heart. The light of God enfolds me, and I am inspired from on high. Turn your eyes to the hills, from which cometh your help, and the response will come. You know how the masses think. They are always going from one extreme to the other extreme. There is war for a period, followed later by a period of peace. When these violent swings take place, many are hurt except those who tune in with the infinite and who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Don't be one of the herd. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians 6.17 In these wonderful verses, you are told to come out from the mass mind, and do your own thinking. You are told specifically not to touch the unclean thing, which means you are not 
to mentally dwell upon murder, hate, or indulge in any form of negative thinking. On the contrary, you are to keep prayed up, which means that you constantly identify mentally and emotionally with the eternal verities of life, which are always the same yesterday, today, and forever. As you keep prayed up, you won't suffer like the masses do. The law of averages refers to the way the mass mind thinks. There are over 4 billion people in the world today, and they are all thinking into the one mind. It is safe to say that most of their thinking is very negative. There are, of course, a great number of spiritually oriented people who are thinking constructively, but they are in the minority. The mass mind believes in sickness, disease, war, misfortune, crime, poverty, accidents, and calamities, and catastrophes of all kind. Moreover, millions of people are full of jealousy, hate, resentment, envy, and hostility. These mental poisons bring on all manners of turmoil and conflict in the individual and collective lives of people. If you do not do your own spiritual thinking, the mass mind, called the law of averages, does your thinking for you. True thinking is free from all fear, worry, and negativity of all kinds. We are all immersed in this mass mind, and we must establish counter-convictions to all the false beliefs and destructive thoughts of the mass mind. If you were 100% vigilant in the sense that all your thoughts and imagery were based on spiritual principles and divine truths, then you would be completely immune. But I doubt if anyone walks in that state of consciousness all the time, therefore undoubtedly the negative mental atmosphere of the mass mind impinges on the subject mind of all of us. What do you believe? Believe in the goodness of God in the land of the living. Believe in the guidance of the infinite presence and power and the abundance and riches of the infinite. Realize that God's riches, spiritual, mental, and material are forever circulating in your life and that there is always a surplus. Believe in the divine principles of harmony, right action, divine law, and order. And divine love in the same way that a chemist believes in the principles of chemistry, which are dependable, enabling him to bring forth marvelous compounds which bless humanity in countless ways. Fear is faith in the wrong thing. Recently, the newspapers reported a fire in a nightclub in which many people were trampled to death and others burned to death. It also mentioned there was no occasion for the panic, as there were sufficient exits to take care of all the people present. There were several, however, who remained quiet and calm, and they found their way out without being hurt. Fear had seized the people, and fear is contagious. Fear was the cause of their deaths, not the fire. Those who turned to the infinite presence and power within and called on it for protection and guidance remained at peace and the way opened up in divine order. Place your faith in God, and then no evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Psalm 91.10 Your faith in God is a conviction of God's present and continuous care. Faith in God is the star that shines in the darkness, revealing the way you should go. Modern scientists do not work in the dark. They work in the light of faith, in quietness, and in confidence. Shall be your strength. Isaiah 30.15 Fill your mind with the eternal verities. Identify with the Spirit within you. Knowing and believing that divine love watches over you in all your ways. If you are careless, negligent, apathetic, listless, and refuse to discipline your mind regularly, then you are subject to the influence of the mass mind and you should not be surprised when reverses and sickness come. When the Asian flu is prevalent, you don't want to be the one of the herd that takes what comes. By enthroning godlike ideas and spiritual values in your mind and filling your mind with constructive thinking, you will be invulnerable and immune to all harm, and you can't be sick, hurt, or defeated. Recently, during one of my seminars on the sea, I saw a woman read the minds of about 10 of the passengers, all of whom were strangers to her. They agreed that she was about 90% accurate. This woman was a sensitive, a professional psychic. She tapped the subconscious of these passengers. 
Actually, what happened was that they told her everything before she told them anything. She got into a psychic, passive, receptive state of mind, a sort of semi-trance. In that state, she was able to read and sense the contents of their subconscious mind. She predicted marriage for some, travel for others to European countries, financial reverses for some, and a divorce for one member of the group. There is nothing new in having the gift of extrasensory perception. Everyone possesses extrasensory perception, but these faculties may be dormant. Dr. J.B. Ryan of Duke University has conducted experiments for over 30 years and has revealed the capacity of clairvoyance, telepathy, clairaudience, telekinesis, retrocognition, and precognition among students and others. His scientific findings have been acknowledged all over the world. His wife, Dr. Louisa Rhine, who is the author of Hidden Channels of the Mind, has revealed various forms of extrasensory perception in personal experience and recorded by men and women in all walks of life. It is true that the future is in your mind now. The reason a clairvoyant can examine the contents of your mind is that the thought and the thing or experience are one in mind. Your mind is timeless and spaceless. For example, if you are contemplating a divorce, a good psychic or medium could tell you that you are planning a divorce, but it still does not have to happen objectively. You could change your mind and have a reconciliation. Nothing is foreordained or predestined. It is true that the divorce has taken place in your mind, but time moves slowly from the fourth dimension into this third dimensional plane. Therefore, it has not happened yet objectively. Likewise, the reverses or illnesses predicted by a psychic, medium, clairvoyant, or card reader, all of whom simply tap your subconscious mind, can be neutralized by scientific prayer, thereby preventing the negative experiences from occurring. Scientific prayer means that you think from universal principles, such as divine law and order govern my life. Divine right action reigns supreme. Divine love saturates my soul. Divine peace fills my mind and heart. Divine guidance governs me in all ways. Divine harmony governs me, and all my ways are pleasantness, and all my paths are peace. As you change your mind by meditating on these truths, your whole body, circumstances, and experiences will magically melt in the image and likeness of your contemplation. Your avoidance of the negative patterns that may be lodged in your subconscious mind will depend on your spiritual awareness and on the enlargement of your consciousness by scientific prayer. As you ascend spiritually, you will automatically avoid the negative experiences of the mass mind. You must leave it a balanced life. You will notice in life that extremes always reverse themselves. When people go too far to any extreme, they are violently thrown back later to the other extreme. You are here to lead a balanced life, one of creativity, of peace, harmony, and the joyous achievement of your purpose is here. As you charge your mental and spiritual batteries regularly, you will neutralize the toxins of the mass mind to a great extent, and you won't suffer from the great swings of fate or the ups and downs of life. You will operate on an even keel, and the sicknesses, sorrows, and tragedies of life will not be experienced by you. If you allow your mind to be hypnotized or thought into by negative newscasters and prophets of doom and gloom, then these thoughts, as they become subjectified, will govern you negatively and destructively. Prayer is the contemplation of the truth of God from the highest standpoint, and you become what you contemplate. The Bible says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. Matthew thirteen twenty four. All of us are gardeners, and the good seeds represent the good thoughts we think all day long. The enemy is the negative suggestion or the thoughts of the mass mind, which may be accepted by your mind if you are not on the qui vive, alert and quickened by the Holy Spirit. Negative thoughts and suggestions bombard us silently and audibly every day. The thing to do for maximum happiness is to continue saturating your mind with divine ideas and then there will be no room for the negative suggestions of others to enter. Your subconscious mind responds to the convictions held by your conscious mind. You must really believe what you affirm. Longing to believe is not enough. 
A woman who counseled with me recently said, I keep affirming God is all there is, the only presence, power, cause, and substance. Nevertheless, at the same time, she was full of fear of another woman who she said was practicing voodoo against her. Her words were pure verbalisms. She really did not believe what she affirmed. I explained to her that the suggestions of others had no power to create the things they suggest and that she had the power to reject all negative suggestions. Actually, I explained that she was transferring the power within herself to the other woman, making her into a sort of goddess with power to hurt her. The only power is God. This presence moves as unity, harmony, beauty, and love. When your thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with your thoughts of good. She began to understand that when you can't give hate, ill will, resentment, or hostility, you can't receive it. That's a simple observation. Therefore, if another person bombards you with negative thoughts and suggestions, you can't receive them, and they return to the sender with double force, which is called the boomerang. Judge Thomas Troward, author of The Hidden Power, states a magnificent truth on page 134 of that book. Once you admit that there is any power outside yourself, however beneficent you may conceive it to be, you have sown the seed which must sooner or later bear the fruit of fear, which is the entire ruin of life, love, and liberty. There is no via media. He emphasizes in his teaching that we are this life principle itself, and that the difference is only that between the generic and the specific of the same thing. This woman of whom I spoke, who was afraid of voodoo suggestions, used the following prayer regularly, and as a result was completely freed from fear. God is all there is. One with God is a majority. If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 I know and I believe that God is the living Spirit, Almighty, the ever-living One, the all-wise One, and there is no power to challenge God. I know and accept completely that when my thoughts are God's thoughts, God's power is with my thoughts of good. I know I cannot receive what I cannot give, and I give out thoughts of love, peace, light, and goodwill to this person or persons, and to everyone else. I am immunized and God intoxicated, and I am always surrounded by the sacred circle of God's love. The whole armor of God surrounds me and enfolds me. I am divinely guided and directed, and I enter into the joy of living. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611 The way to look at people who say they are using voodoo, black magic, or sorcery is to see them for what they really are. That is to say, they are men and women who are terribly ignorant of the real spiritual power. They imagine they have power, but they don't. To see and understand this is to cease to give any power to them. The real and ultimate power is that of the affirmative. Their negative suggestions have no power except you accept the suggestions, which then become the movement of your own thought. Your affirmation of divine love, divine harmony, and divine right action governing you destroys all negative suggestions and builds up life, health, and happiness. The ultimate affirmative position is your conscious unity with the infinite spirit within you, the source of all life. Realize your oneness with God and feel a genuine goodwill to all, and then you need not trouble about negative suggestions. Why do we suffer? We suffer because of our misapplication and misuse of universal laws and principles. As long as we deviate from the golden rule and the law of harmony, we will suffer. It is correct to say that ignorance is the only sin, and all the suffering in the world is that consequence. Our suffering causes us to seek the answer. In that way, we awaken to the light within and we discover our divinity. We must use the law righteously. That means to think right, to feel right, to act right and do right. Then we will no longer suffer due to our ignorance of the laws of life and the way of the spirit. There are many so-called pious people who look down at those who don't believe the way they do. These good people blindly follow all the tenets, rules, and regulations of their church. No doubt they feel self-righteous and have perhaps a holier-than-thou attitude. Oft times they are full of condemnation and resentment toward those who don't conform to their superstitious and ignorant beliefs. 
These negative attitudes bring on reverses, illnesses, and neuroses. Many times when setbacks and tragedies come into their lives, they get angry at God and can't understand that religion is of the heart, not of the lips. Furthermore, they have forgotten the law that we become what we condemn. Religion means to bind back. We should be bound to the source of all life, to divine love, divine peace, divine truth, and divine beauty. When these truths govern and dominate us, we will automatically express them, and the fruits of our religion will be made manifest. Many devout and religious men at one time or another have engaged in drunken orgies and sexual excesses. St. Augustine once said, Lord, grant me chastity, and then, as an afterthought, said, Not yet. St. Francis led rather wild life in his youth, and then in later life went to the other extreme when he practiced rigidities, austerities, and mortification of the flesh. He went to extremes in his practice of penitential discipline, believing that this was the way to strengthen his will and overcome the negativity of his past. At one time in his life, he realized his error and said, Too late I have beaten my brother. By his brother he meant his body, which he mistreated. He forgot what Paul had said, Glorify God in your body, 1 Corinthians 6.20. Remember there is a reciprocal relationship between your thought and the supreme power within you. The power of suggestion is a hidden power, but the power which creates all things is the hidden power which is behind all creation and is one and indivisible. It moves only as harmony, wholeness, beauty, and perfection. There is nothing to oppose the infinite. Challenge it. Thwart or vitiate it. It is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. This is why it is written, If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 In the symbolism of the Bible, an Israelite is any person who aligns with the divine spirit within looking upon the living spirit almighty as the only presence power cause and substance and giving it complete allegiance as you turn to it there is a reciprocal response and this power flows through you as harmony health peace joy and prosperity this is why it is written in numbers 23 23 surely there is no enchantment against jacob a man awakening to the presence and power of god Neither is there any divination against Israel, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Exodus 11.7 And this concludes this amazing lecture by Joseph Murphy. The important concept that I want you to consider is the mass mind. Joseph Murphy is essentially talking about the pendulum, but in a larger way. The mass mind, we talk about a lot, the universal mind and tapping into the universal mind. But there is a negative to this, and that is the mass mind. The mass mind, which he has discussed in several different lectures, may be the cause of all of our negative thoughts. It's the reason that we age. It's the reason that we suffer. Because when we are not within our own divinity, and we're merely thinking with the mass mind and not for ourselves... There's a negativity to it. Now, for some, this sort of contradicts the idea of avoiding separation. We're talking about the mass mind that accepts fear and ignorant-based thoughts, thoughts that are outside of the divine. This deals with the concept of security as a spiritual principle. Murphy interprets biblical verses to argue that the true security comes from an awareness and connection to the divine presence within you. He is suggesting that when you understand and live according to spiritual laws, you experience a deep sense of safety and protection, no matter the external circumstances. Murphy's emphasizing that security is not just a physical or material condition, but a state of mind and spirit. You may watch the news, you may get scared for your own security. He's using examples from the Bible, such as Judges 18.10 and Job 11.18 to illustrate that when we align ourselves with God or the divine, we find ourselves in a secure place, symbolically a land of abundance and peace. The security is not just about physical safety, but encompasses emotional and spiritual well-being. 
Now there is an impact of fear and the collective consciousness or the mass mind is arguing that fear can be destructive and that succumbing to the mass mind's negative beliefs can lead to suffering. Instead, he advocates for individual spiritual practice and thinking which can offer protection from negative influence of the broader society. It's very easy to pick up your phone and sort of doom scroll and start to get scared about the world. I do it. I know that you do. And it's very easy to do. But Murphy is advising against that and instead focusing on the divine principles. What you contemplate is what your life ends up reflecting. There may be truth in all those things to be fearful about, but it's about your attention and what you're focusing on. He's touching on the idea of prayer and its power to foster security by focusing on positive spiritual truths and principles. You can create a mental environment that is resistant to negative influences. This idea is rooted in the belief that our inner life greatly influences our outer experiences. Do you want to let the mass mind influence your outer experience? You can tune into a social memory complex or a soul group that you know is positive and is focused on serving others. But if you're focusing on the mass mind, which is sort of asleep, unconscious, unaware, if you're focusing on the media, which is literally designed to create fear, because if it bleeds, it leads, then you are succumbing to those thoughts and they subjectify in your life. So you have to be aware of what portion of the mass mind you're tuning into. As you become more spiritually mature, you become aware of your connection to the universal mind and the different aspects of it. And you can tune into a higher portion of that universal mind, which is actually conscious. The mass mind is unconscious. So in summary, this is talking about the importance of spiritual understanding and practice in achieving true security. And I encourage you to turn inward and connect with the divine and embrace spiritual truths to navigate the challenges of the world with a sense of peace and protection. So say this with me, I am enveloped in the divine presence where absolute security and peace are my constant companions. In every step I take, the light of divine wisdom guides me, ensuring that I walk in harmony and grace. I trust in the boundless love and protection of God, knowing that I am always supported and cared for, surrounded by this sacred energy. I find strength and serenity in every moment, confident that I am on the path of abundance, joy, and spiritual fulfillment. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. I'd love it if you checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.art. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. Mm-hmm.